when I first decided to participate in sorry oh, okay when I first decided to participate in, in this conference my original intention was to talk about the poetic and the thinking of Tanabe Hajime my intent has however evolved considerably since then and I owe my thanks to the committee of the ENOJP for their flexibility <laughs> Instead of tackling the, the poetic, I will take a step back and address the philosophical pro problem which first motivated me to turn my attention to Japanese philosophy and thus address a transition from phenomenology to dialectics, from intuition to movement in the figures of Jan Patochka and Tanabe Hajime. I am, however, as of yet, still far from grasping the, uh, in full the considerable contribution of Tanabe Hajime. And what I put for, uh, before you is more a problem than a solution, some suggestions regarding a dialogue between two thinkers, which has not taken place. To make my proposition clear from the, the outset, my, my thesis is that the radicalization of phenomenology leads to a radicalization of dialectics. In other words, Patochka's asubjective phenomenology can be further radicalized through the insights of Tanabe's metanoetical totus dialectique. I will shortly out outline the fundamental problem of the ontological uh, ambiguity which calls for this dialectical turn, and I will uh, afterwards proceed to, uh, to examine first what I call the Socratic epoche in, uh, in Patochka's philosophy as uh, a critique of intuitionism, which leads, in turn, uh, to his turn towards uh, dialectics. In the following section, uh, of, my intervention, of my intervention, I will try to show how Tanabe's radicalization of dialectics complement the Socratic and asubjective epoche of Patochka. On a uh, bibliographical note, I've used the French translations of Patochka by Erika Abrams, um, and uh, in relation to Tanabe, I have focused mainly on the English translation of philosophy as Metanoetics uh, by Takeuchi Yoshinori uh, with uh, Valdo Villelmo and uh, James Isaac. And on the uh, German and French partial translations of Seino Sonzai Gaku Ka, Sino Bensho Hoka, respectively translated as Tourist Dialectique by Koichi uh, Tsujimura and uh, Hartmund Buchner, and more fittingly as Ontologie de la, de la Vie ou Dialectique de la Mort by Yasuhiko uh, Sugimura. This is uh, due to, uh, to some external extreme, uh, restraints. Um, the, the problem uh, which I would like to take as my point of departure concerns the, necess uh, the, the necessary concreteness of our existence, or the unity of ontological difference and sameness, both of which are essential components to our relation to the world. On the one hand, the self is indeed ontologically distinct from that which presents itself to it, precisely because it is the atrocy of phenomenality, to borrow a term from Renaud Babas, who was, by the way, the, the French phenomenologist to whom I alluded before. Uh, on the other hand, the self is a, um, uh, is a being of the world, like the other things uh, given to our senses because of its uh, finitude. The self is historically, socially, and corporeally uh, inscribed in the fabric of the world. That is to say, Although the subject is ontologically different, this difference is not synonymous with an opposition or an alterity to the world. Rather than parting from the, the opposition of two ontological uh, realms and trying to make them converge in our, in our concrete ex uh, experience and existence, it seems that the most promising path would consist in con uh, conceiving the twain on the grounds of a sense of being which internally develops their difference. This is why not only naivete in the sense of the thesis of the existence of the world, not only the simple positing of objectivity, but also any trace of subjectivism ought to be drawn into question as we are to, uh, if we are to understand existence in, con in concrete terms, which is um, uh, the, the, the interest of both uh, Tanabe and, uh, and, and Patochka. And this is precisely why phenomenology has a dialectical destiny, so to speak. My first, part, uh, my, my first section is called uh, Tanabe, the Socratic epoche. Ever, uh, ever since his youth in the 30s, Jan Patochka is critical of the notion of intuition as a point of departure for questioning the, questioning the ontological meaning 
of the human existence. The finitude of human existence is a key concept to the Czech philosopher's writings all through his life and constitutes the main thrust of his critique of intuition, which will eventually drive a wedge between the epoche as the fundamental insight of in phenomenology and the phenomenological reduction, on the other hand. Finitude has, in the, uh, the early texts, um, uh, a function akin to that of the epoche, uh, a neutralize, uh, neutralization of the position of objectivity, not concerning only the object of perception, but concerning human existence in its historicity and concerning history as such. The first time uh, Pelotska uh, explicitly, ex explicitly uses his, uh, this insight in a creative way in relation to phenomenology is in his unfinished book from 1947, Eternity and Historicity. Here, Patochka, uh, uh, so to speak, mobilizes uh, Socrates against Husserl. Socrates, who embodies the philosophical attitude in Patochka's writings, revealed our historical and problematic existence as the creative foundation of sense and values. Patochka's Socrates is not a Platonic Socrates. Uh, it is, as he says, a, a Socratic Socrates. It's not the Socrates uh, of the positive realm of, of ideas. On the contrary, the question uh, for Socrates, according to Patochka, concerns the soul as a relation to the good, with a capital G. The relation uh, is one of negative knowledge or of non-knowledge, as he writes. This negativity is clarified in, uh, in a slightly later manuscript, te uh, tellingly titled Negative Platonism. Shortly stated, Patochka here uh, reinterprets the chorismos, normally taken to mean the separation between the realm of ideas and the world of appearances in, in Plato. To Patochka, however, the chorismos is originally a separation without a second domain of objects or a distinction in itself, uh, absolute separation as such, end of quotation, because the realm of ideas is not to be understood as a positive second realm of being, but a negative plus, as he writes. It is not something that could be objectively given, but presents uh, itself as a, uh, a retreat or a withdrawal as this negativity of transcendence is the discovery of Socrates, the Greek thinker has no dogma, but only questions. He has no doctrine to teach, but only seeks through, through interrogation to awaken his fellow man to the negativity of his own being, to care for the soul as uh, a relation to the negativity of, of a good that is pure transcendence, another transcendence to something, to a positive being beyond this world. As such, man is essentially characterized by openness in his very being, by an ontological lack. The sophists, however, are oblivious uh, to this duality of human existence and conceive of man, as Patochka writes, as a thing rather than, uh, uh, than a becoming endowed with meaning. They consider man ahistorically, end of quotation. Historicity, Patochka explains, is the negative moment of insatisfaction, of absence in, in the given, the call for a realization in time, end of quotation. But mostly, we turn um, our, a blind eye to this negativity of existence, the, neg uh, the negativity which constitutes precisely our openness to the good. In other words, the reification of our existence, uh, in which inauthenticity consists, turns us away from this ethical essence of our being, which is open when we take our negativity upon ourselves, when we assume our finitude. But this de-objectifying meaning of the Socratic awakening of the Gnotis Auton also uh, means challenging the idea of a, uh, a contemplative intellectual perspective, as could be seen already in an article from 1934, uh, when Patochka writes, that history is agnotis to, to, uh, to reason, a call for reason to know its own limits. Reason, he here argues, in substance, is not 
a viable approach to history since history refuses the bird perspective of a consciousness standing outside of it. It cannot be the object of intuition precisely because of its negativity, its being open-ended. And this open-endedness is synonymous with its enveloping character. The fact that it pertains to history to be something in which we are inscribed. This Socratism uh, or negative Platonism both has the function of an epoche and at the same time forms the ground on which Patochka will criticize Rousseau. Consciousness comes into the world first and foremost as a protest against objectivity as such. I quote Patochka, without the fundamental structure of the spirit to which, um, uh, to which what we call a negative affection pertains, which affects the object with a minus sign, consciousness would be entirely impossible, at least in the clearly polarized subject-object form." End of quotation. So the neutralization of the epoche is thus not a secondary consciousness of extreme uh, abstraction, but is pre-theoretically the very basis of our consciousness. This fundamental protest which is uh, the spiritual basis of consciousness, is, so to speak, Janus-faced. On the one hand, it connotes the non-objectivity of this fundamental strait of consciousness itself. On the other hand, it refers to that which, uh, to which the spirit is directed, and that is um, the totality of the world as such, or the negativity of good in, in the Socratic reading. Patochka's Socratic reading of Husserl uh, in this crucial but often disregarded text from 1947, this completely turns phenomenology upside down. The thesis of the existence of the world, which in Husserl is what must be suspended in the epoche, is on the other hand, in the Socratic reading, the truth of the epoche. But the reason why that can be the case is that whereas Husserl's uh, philosophy presupposes that in, uh, intuition has exclusive rights to epidicticity because of its fullness, um, Patochka, uh, and, and, and therefore uh, is the, the only uh, possible uh, basis for, for um, uh, phenomenology. Uh, Patochka here, on the other hand, separates Ursprünglichkeit and intuition. Uh, because this intuitionist core of Husserl's philosophy, Patochka realizes is in fact contrary to the fundamental Socratic truth of the problematic character of existence. The fullness of Husserl's imminent perception sets uh, the Erlebnisse apart from transcendence, which is always inadequately given. Thus, Husserl limits the scope of the epoche, giving it the form of a phenomenological reduction to that which, in virtue of the positive uh, self-identity of its givenness, cannot be suspended, namely consciousness. But as Patochka remarks, this understanding of the epoche starts out by, sil by silencing that which is first and foremost a protest against objectivity, that is the, 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 the spiritual basis of consciousness. It is a reification of this fundamental stratus of consciousness. To put it in direct terms, the reduction is an adulteration of the epoche which existence is in its openness to the negativity of good or to the to totality of the world in its negative sense, as pure transcendence. Th this transcendence thus cannot be reduced to the imminence of a consciousness given to itself, and thus cannot be considered as constituted by a, a, an absolute consciousness. This givenness of the non-given, the presence in the form of absenting, thus cannot be considered subjective. On the contrary, all acts of intentionality rely on this fundamental negative givenness. Patechka can thus uh, radicalize the epoche as devoid of a, of a phenomenological reduction and thus give phenomenology an asubjective term. Reduction is dialect, uh, no, reflection, sorry, is dialectical because, of, uh, because as all phenomen uh, phenomenality comports the uh, horizon of the totality of the world, um, all clarity envelops an obscurity. The idea in the Socratic sense is not something seen, but a fundamental obscurity by virtue of which we see. 
this realization makes Sanabe write explicitly in uh, Negative Platonism uh, that dialectics is an adequate approach. In other words, the dialectics demanded by a radicalization of phenomenology must in itself be a radicalized, uh, a radicalized dialectics. I would uh, conclude. This is also the direction taken in Patochka's discussions of Hegel's aesthetics during the 60s. Indeed, as we saw a moment ago, historicity forms, so to speak, the prototype of all enveloping totality, which leads Patochka to the, to the question of intuition, and thus to the, the idea that all givenness is mediated by the negative plus of the world. This means that the sense of being of the world and of the subject both must be understood in terms that cannot um, accommodate the notion of truth as uh, adequatio rei et intellectus, cannot accommodate the analytics that rely on the principle of non-contradiction from which Hegel, in Tanabe's words, failed to emancipate himself. This is, be uh, this is because they are both to be understood as non-identical to themselves. Another dialectics must therefore be found. I pass to, my, to the, 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 the last part of my uh, my presentation, Tanabe and the Parmenidian dialectics. The Socratic epoche of uh, Patochka's asubjective phenomenology does not stray far from Tanabe's uh, um, metanoetics and the, the radicalization of dialectics which it, which it signifies. Indeed, at the start of philosophy as metanoetics, Tanabe uh, notes that Socrates pursued the way of metanoetics uh, through the irony of the knowledge of ignorance, end of quotation. But the comparison is quickly passed over, and the Socratic irony is seen as a mere uh, crossing point towards a positive knowledge, rather than the actual openness to good in its negativity. And Tanabe thus misses the mark. A look at the, at, uh, the metanoetics will, however, bring to the fore the, uh, the confluence of the Socratic awakening and the self-awakening in Tanabe's philosophy as a uh, radicalization of dialectics. In the, uh, in the great work uh, from the end of World War II, philosophy as metanoetics, the experience of zange, or metanoia, or repentance, is elevated to the status of a philosophical method. In Tanabe's perspective, the only possible philosophy. The essence, the essence of metanoetics is clearly stated at the outset of the book. Tanabe writes, Metanoetics carries the sense of metanoetics, denoting uh, philologically a transcending of, of noetics, or in other words, a transcending of metaphysical philosophy based on contemplation or intellectual intuition achieved by the use of reason. Like the Socrat Socratic epoche, this neutralization is Janus-faced. It both neutralizes the, the positing of a subject and, uh, and of objectivity as such, in a way that cannot, be, uh, that, that cannot but remind us of Malarmé's letters, Tanabe writes in his preface, it is no longer I who pursue philosophy, but Zange that thinks through me, end of quotation. This, asubjecti uh, this asubjectivity sets Tanabe's thought apart from the whole of philosophy characterizing metanoetics as a philosophy that is not philosophy, or a philosophy that is not a philosophy, actually, uh, or a non-philosophical uh, philosophy. So what differentiates metanoetics from philosophy? What is, so to speak, the philosophical naivete that, is, uh, that this non-philosophy neutralizes? Metanoetics is a non-philosophy in as far as the principle of thought, according to Tanabe, is based on self-identity. Metanoesis, which can be translated as beyond thought or afterthought, has the, uh, has the ambition of transcending this principle in the same movement as self is awakened to its own nothingness in repentance. Metanoia or repentance can thus be said to have the meaning of an existential or affective epoche, much like anguish in Heidegger. However, Tanabe intends to go a step further with his concept of repentance. 
in anguish, as we know, nothingness reveals itself through the Weckrücken des Seienden uh, im Ganzen, so uh, the drawing away of the of being with the small b in totality. But this nothingness uh, is reduced to the status um, of the um, uh, of the correlate to our uh, Sein zum Tode, of our being towards death, which is subjected to Tisnabe's uh, critique uh, in the text titled Ont uh, Ontology of Life or Dialectics of Death. Insofar as nothingness um, uh, in, in Heidegger's idea is something towards which we are, Sein zum Tode, um, it, may, uh, it may define existence, but does not penetrate it. And furthermore, nothingness is condemned to remain a possibility, that is, it lacks reality, which is why Tanabe classes Heidegger's ontology as a philosophy of life. Negativity here has no actuality. In Sugimura Yasuhiko's terms, Heidegger's death um, is a wall which Tanabe's metanoetics, on the other hand, penetrates. Repentance <clears throat> does not hold nothingness out in front of us, as uh, Sainz Mutore does, but negates the self in the present. It is the act of abandoning the self, and is thus an act without a subject, an act of absolute nothingness. In this sense, Tanavi's metanoetics is not a possible death, not an idealism of nothingness, but an actual death. That is, of course, uh, not to say a physical death, but the self-consciousness of nothingness. As a point of departure for philosophy, Metanoetics is thus quite clearly opposed to the subjectivism and substantialism of the Cartesian, ego, uh, of the Cartesian cogito. The point of departure of philosophy is anything but a res cogitans, of a thinking thing. In the fourth chapter of uh, Metanoetics, we find that uh, we find what could almost be the basis for a negative cogito. Metanoetics is, Tanabe writes, not a self-consciousness of the fact that my self exists, but an action witness of the fact that my, I'm sorry, these my should be in, in quotation marks. So I'll read it again. Uh, not, uh, not a self-consciousness of the fact that my self exists, but uh, an action witness of the fact that my self does not exist. Making consciousness the point of departure through substantialization of the, uh, of the ego, uh, con uh, con conceived as ontologically independent, independent as, as the, the Kogito would, the Cartesian Kogito, is what Tanabe understands as radical evil. This is why repentance is the absolute, in the absolute sense of metanoia, can only be understood as a negation of the self, a death and resurrection. The reification of the soul, understood as the blindness of our fundamental openness to God and negativity, which we saw in the above, therefore quite closely resembles the position of self-power, which Tanabe criticizes. The main thrust of Tanabe's critique of Heidegger is thus that the, that the German thinker ultimately opposes being in nothingness. And his metanoetics instead, uh, um, and, and Tanabe's metanoetics instead establish their mutual penetration and transformation as the truth of our existence. It is the dynamic unity of being and nothingness. Tanabe distinguishes between a Parmenidian radical dialectics and a, Her a Heraclitian dialectics. In the latter, the opposition of being and nothingness is, inscri uh, is inscribed uh, and thus determines the current of life philosophies. Here, truth is reserved for identity with the consequence that, as he writes, that which is true must be eternal, whereas movement and change, change um, which must correspond to an altera uh, alteration of being and nothingness, falls outside the domain of truth. Instead, Tanabe separates this iliatism from, from Parmenides, uh, whose thinking is rather concentrated in what Tanabe calls the infinite radicalization of dialectical thinking, according to which being and non-being are the same and are not the same. The essential lesson of this paradox is the radicalization of mediation as the only absolute of dialectics. In other words, 
any idea of, an, uh, of a substantial being which does not need an, anything else than itself in order to exist must be reduced to the reality of movement. It can be glanced, uh, as can be glanced from Tanabe's commentary. The eternal, I, I, I quote him, uh, the, um, in, from, from, the, from the French uh, translation, right? Um, uh, the eternal does not dissolve uh, time by assimilating it in itself, but instead falls into time in order to realize itself by the mediation of its flow. The true being of eternity thus comes to, the, uh, uh, comes to be through the uh, intermediary of a self-negating, enduring, in, in French the translation is patience, and in uh, German the, the translation is ertragen. So uh, through the intermediary of a, a, um, a self-negating, enduring, which consists in accepting the reversal of death resurrection. End of quotation. The idea of the absolute mediation is thus a chiasmic philosophy, which constitutes the ground for uh, the, asubject uh, the asubjectivity of metanoetics, or in the terms which Tanabe inherits from Shinran, the passage from self-power to other power. Metanoetics is, um, a, is a pure action in the sense that it negates its own subject, but at the same time, this negation is the self-affirmation uh, of eternity as negativity, the negation through which it comes to be. Both terms of this correlation are, to, uh, are thus reduced, in the, in the sense of brought back to, reduced to the, circul uh, the circularity or the tourbillon of being and nothingness, which may be understood as the fundamental intertwining of transcendence and imminence. The awakening of this dialectical root uh, no, the, the awakening to this dialectical root of existence is thus one with becoming it, with negating the substantialized uh, conception of our selves, which uproots us. And it can therefore, under no circumstances, take the form of contemplation, but must, as dialectical unity with the originary activity, be termed as action witness. Self-consciousness is, as Tanabe affirms, the center of the circularity of pure movement. For the, for the sake of speaking with some clarity, at least, on uh, a dense topic, I've had to sacrifice a number of, intersecting, uh, of interesting intersections between uh, Patochka's philosophy and Tanabe's. For example, I would have liked to further pursue the religious aspect of the so-called third movement of existence in Patochka's late philosophy, the movement relating to the fundamental openness uh, to, uh, to totality and to good. It should not, however, go unmentioned before we finish, uh, however briefly and as a mere pointer, that in accordance with the radical desubstantialization of the, the subject in the asubjective epoche, Movement in Patochka is, just as in Tanabe, has, uh, has an ontological meaning. It is that which realizes the mobile, the thing, the, 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 that which moves. It is uh, that which determines it in its being, unifying being and phenomenality. In conclusion, no, a conclusion, I wanted to say, in the strict sense of the word, would demand that the argument be developed more in depth and the space of a talk uh, than the space of a talk would allow. As stated in the introduction, I have aimed to suggest a problem rather than, to, than, a def, uh, than a definitive solution. So by way of conclusion, I will instead try to sum up the position that I've tried to, to sustain. Namely, that the subjectivism and substantialism in which, sub, uh, uh, in which intuitionism results is in both uh, Patochka's and Tanabe's philosophies seen not only as an intellectual problem, but as an existential and ethical such. The transcending of this problem can be called a radicalization of phenomenology, but it must comprise, if not become, a radicalized dialectics, which places movement at the foundation of, of existence as an absolute mediation. This is, so to speak, the, the point of confluence of Patochka's radicalization of, of Socrates and Tanabe's radicalization of Parmenides. However, 
the phenomenological problem has not thus reached its conclusion. The radicalization only makes the problem of expressing the, the negativity of existence all the more urgent, urgent and refers us, uh, as is clear in the texts of Tanabe, to the question of the simple and thus ultimately to poetics. Thank you for your attention. There is a subject, but, but the thing is that the subject is not that which creates phenomenality as such. Mm -hmm. That's also why I've taken on the term of ad, uh, the, the addressee, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it, mean, it aims to, um, to, to neutralize, so to speak, the, the metaphysical uh, baggage that the idea of subject comes with. I've used, however, subject uh, throughout. Um, but, but just to make the, the from the onset, from the outset, uh, this this mm, neutralization clear. I, I, I use that that term. Um, to your question about whether phenomenology um, disappears, it's it, it it I think that transformed is is a, is a good is a good word as you say uh, to to dialectics a dialectics which is also a phenomenology of of movement. Uh, Patashka of course makes a phenomenolo phenomenology of movement, but the thing is that. The problem of phenomenology is not only the the it, it, the the, appear, the how some how that which appears to us appears, but uh, but must also account for the our inscription in the world because the abstract uh, idea of, of consciousness cannot account for it, and that's that's why it's 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 uh, important to to get to this uh, dialectical. Uh, point of of, uh, of view and to uh, uh, movement. As I shortly, very shortly on the line at the end, m movement in Patochka's philosophy in, um, gives us the possibility of of tie tying the two together: the realization in the world and the uh, and and the phenomenalization, right? The, how uh, of phenomenality. And corporeality, because movement must be um, uh, a bodily movement, but it is at the same time that which ties being and phenomenal and and the the the, the qualities of the things together in a unity. Care for the soul.
that gave him an openness to the good. And if you don't recognize the lack of good, you can't go for an openness to the good. That's a very interesting logical ideal, idea. Um, but it, it needs something else to work. In other words, I could say that um, I become aware of the absence of evil in my life. I haven't killed anybody this week. You know? And therefore, that leaves me open to kill them. Mm -hmm. So it assumes a kind of a notion of what the good is and why the good is better than its opposite. And now, in the case of Tanabe, we have this other power which makes me aware of, oh, the lack in myself. You know, I thought I could do it all on my own. I thought reason, but all of a sudden I found out reason has got big holes in it. And it's not enough. So this makes me open then to, uh, to, to further enlightenment, to, to other power. Well, what makes other power a better attitude to have in the time of war? I mean, think of all the people of blind loyalty to their god that have gone around slaughtering people and destroying civilizations. Mm. So um, when you bring it to the ethical um, and, and then jump over to the political, I think before we leave the ethical, we have to find out uh, why this logic of lack, this negative presence you said in the world where I realize that I know I don't know or I, I, I realize that I lack good, that this opens me to something. Um, why? Um, we, we need an extra, an extra step there, you see? That yeah. The good and why uh, the power? And Tanami really never answers that about it. He just sort of thinks, well, it's the opposite of what I was doing, so it's got to be better. But um, in fact, most of the people who were, who were jumping into planes were actually other power people. Thank you. Thank you for your question and for and also for your your, your suggestions and um, um, regarding uh, the negativity of good, it's not that it's a lack of good. It's that good should rather be understood as a pure transcendence and therefore problematic in in uh, Patochka's philosophy. So it's it's not a negation of good. It is a negation rather in good in a certain sense, right? It's a, it's something to which, toward which, which does not have definitive answers, but can only be searched for in, in a, in a quest in a certain sense. This is the negativity of it. It's that it's a pure transcendence. Uh, I'm not sure I understand what that means. I mean, I understand what you can say. I, I realize that I'm not... It's something that cannot be objectified. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lack of goodness in me, but I can open myself to that. I can understand that. But I, I still don't see how that solves the problem of the lack of anything else in me. Why, why choose goodness? I mean, evil transcends me as well on all sides. Yes, yes, the thing, the thing is that we're posing the question now. Yeah. Well, I, I'll say that, that uh, first of all, I'll, of course, uh, r recommend reading Patachka. It's always uh, interesting. Uh, but uh, I, th I think that you will find that uh, you pose the, the question at a, at a di in a different way than, than he does. Uh, the thing is that, to him, the, the question is, is, is not... Um, the, 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 it's, it's rather to pass by this or, or to, to overcome this, this opposition of presence or, or of, of something that there is, and a lack. It's rather that he understands that at the, at the very foundation of that which is presence, there is an, uh, a withdrawal. There is a presence which is an absencing, and that's the idea of the Socratic good. So, so there, is, there is the dialectical in the sense, right? It's not, a, it's not an opposition that's that's that, that's why the, the, we need a, uh, a radicalization of of, uh, of dialectics here because it's not an opposition of nothing and being of of negativity and positivity. It's that in being there is this this negativity, which means that the, the subject can only realize itself in the world as as movement. That's actually what it is. That 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 
the, that the, the self should be understood, therefore, as a, an ontological lack. Because it, it's fundamentally um, uh, a, a relation to this pure openness, this pure transcendence without an ontological mask to, to take uh, a, a Merleau-Pontian uh, expression. Yeah, I have two short questions, but probably they are too large, I think, maybe we can speak later about this. Like, methodological question about this kind of uh, as a, a phenomenology of Patoshka. Uh, in what sense, like, because it's not clear at all to me, in what sense uh, a phenomenon uh, presupposes the totality of the world negatively? What does it mean negativity here? And what does it mean totality? And then, and another question pertaining to negativity, why you uh, interpret, uh, why you, do, do you interpret uh, movement also in a, as a negativity? Because for example, in a, at least uh, Western uh, first conceptualization of movement, so in Aristotle, like, like in philosophical terms, it's like movement something always like metabole change from actinos ast from something to something. So why should be negativity here? I mean like when you move from one point to be like in a change of the change of the uh, in a spatial tense, or for example flower is changing to a fruit, in what sense the fruit is negation of the flower? So, like in general, why to, to consider... Okay. Right, right, right. I get it, I get it. Okay. Okay, yes. There were quite a few questions there. I'll, 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 I'll try to get at it. Sorry? <laughs> um, well, um, movement... Um, the, the movement in uh, Patochka's uh, philosophy has um, a few different uh, sources... Um, on the one hand, it's it's this um, the, actually the first time when he explicitly talks about movement, to my knowledge, is in a text just after the one that I've commented here, uh, one uh, from uh, 48, where he uh, where it's about um, beauty in in uh, uh, Plato, and and here he talks about the the soul as as movement towards uh, good. That that this is well, I should keep it short. And this good is uh, is a uh, withdrawal, and therefore this can only the, the soul can only be understood right as as a um, as a movement towards it. Um, movement uh, is later uh, in the, the middle of the sixties um, dealt with in the the sense of in the in the uh, uh, on on the basis of Aristotle's. Um, uh, philosophy. In any case, here as well, it's it's a movement towards a, a certain telos, right? Um, towards the good of of the universe as such, right? There's there's this the whole universe is, um, or the whole of, of of the world, is in a movement towards a larger perfection. So there's a certain uh, negativity to, in in regard to this perfection, but this perfection should be understood not as um, an ideal um, a state that that state of things that could actually be obtained. There is no um, uh, the, the the teleology of it is is problematic for the reasons that I've tried to outline here because it it um, it it uh, presupposes the uh, return of spirit to itself and therefore a um, a logic of identity. Um, that's that's the the problem that that uh, Patochka also sees in in in, uh, in Hegel, and and where where uh, why he needs to radicalize uh, dialectics, right? Um, so so the, the the basic idea is that the move that that our relation to the world is first and foremost to a totality which is intotalizable, in totalité intotalisable. He writes in the in the French translation, right? Um, so, in that sense, it is something that can in no way 
be reduced to, um, to, to an objective givenness, but is simply given as a negative plus, as I quoted as well before. A negative plus, which means right, it's, it's a withdrawal in front of us. And therefore, the, the subject, which is as a relation to this, can only um, uh, be a uh, uh, be as, as movement towards it, right? And but um, there there are a lot of things that I would need to uh, to, to yes. say in one minute if I should. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>